Okay, so today is finally the day that we are going to go pick up our chicks. We are driving to Chugiak right now to pick up 30 Icelandic chicks. Earlier this morning, I was thinking that we actually made our first YouTube video about a year ago, and it was on our brooder setup of the chicks and ducks we were raising at the time in Oregon. Now at that time we had hundreds of chicks at our shed and that video is actually not on our YouTube because we never uploaded it properly to our computer and I think there was copyright issues with the music. So that video is no longer with us, but it has been about a year since we started YouTube. So let's get going. Okay, we're loaded up and we're heading out to pick up the chicks. So we just made a pit stop at the laundromat before getting the chicks. This is the first time we have done laundry I think we decided in maybe like five or six months since we've got our system at the house and we're still loving that. It's great. And I, we made the decision to do laundry here at the laundromat because we are actually going to be brooding the chicks in the plastic bins that we use for laundry and we go about every three weeks. So it was kind of nice to, to do it, but a little pricey. Okay. So now we are really headed to pick up the chicks. All right, so we got the chicks. We're heading home and we're gonna get them in their brooder, which is gonna be upstairs in our loft. So what I'm doing is getting some rocks, tiny rocks that are going to be grit for the chickens. I could probably just buy some, but we have lots of little rocks around here that would be appropriate for them and uh, there's a lot of sand too. So sand's too fine, but these little rocks will be perfect for the chicks. Yesterday we picked up the chicks and we got them situated in two brooders up here. I was gonna give a little rundown of what we, our little setup up here. These chicks are now about two days old. Since we have 30 of them, I split them up into two different bins. At first I had them in this one and they were doing fine, but they're very active for their age and what I'm used to. So I wanted to split them up just to make sure that they get to rest and each get food equally and water and all of that. Eric made these tops out of hardware cloth and one by ones. We used these last time too and they, they work really well and it's mainly for predators in the house. It's our cats. So that's what it works for. You can put something heavy on top, but even if you're raising them outside, they work really well. I have newspaper down. Usually I put shavings. The reason I have the newspaper is that these chicks were actually trying to eat the shavings. I haven't had an issue with that in the past. These ones are incredible foragers, so they were really trying to scarf the shavings down. So we just have the newspaper for now, and as they get a little older, we will introduce them to those shavings. I'm gonna give them each a plate of food. I have kefir and hard-boiled eggs that we cut up. I don't give this to them every day as chicks. I give it to them maybe twice a week. Here we've got fermented grain. It's only been fermenting for a day and they really like this stuff. Some of those pea chunks are a little bit too big but they will just pick around what they can eat. So this is some of those sand and rocks that I pulled the other day and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on top to make sure they're getting rocks into their gizzards. Perfect, let's get them fed. I'm gonna put a little dry grain around here too to kind of intrigue them. Oh no, I got it on you little bugger. We did lots of research on what breed of chicken we wanted to get. And this is actually an Icelandic chicken. They're all Icelandic chickens and they're not a breed. They are a land race. This is a really cute little guy who's probably wanting to get back. 
so I'll go ahead and put them back. We wanted a chicken that had a really good foraging ability so we don't have to feed them as much. And again, I don't really like to feed commercial pellets. They're also appropriately a hardy bird for Alaska. They do have bigger combs, so that's something we're gonna have to watch for with the cold weather. They usually lay pretty well in the winter. I think their average of eggs is about 180 a year, so that's pretty good for the type of chicken they are, especially if you're not having to feed them a lot of food. The main reason that we went with this breed is because of their broodiness. They're known to be great mothers, so we're gonna have roosters and moms that will raise their own clutches. That way we won't have to have them inside. You know, we don't have really the ability to have an incubator, and I also don't really have the means to be heating an area for them all the time when I want new chickens. So they should be able to take care of that on their own. We've been keeping them up here in our loft, which we can get the temperature 80 to 90 degrees pretty easily. That's what we kept it at yesterday was about 88 to 92 and they liked that. And what we're going to be doing, what we've done with all our chicks in the past is virtually every day just decreasing that temperature by a few degrees until we can get them to where they're ready to go outside and probably have a heat lamp at night for the first week or two. They should be ready to do that within two to three weeks. We have a heat lamp here that I have put on a, on occasion, but we haven't really had to use it. We don't quite believe in a cookie cutter approach with raising chicks. We just go by their behaviors and what they're telling us if they're too cold or they're too hot. It's actually pretty clear if you just pay attention to them. So our older chicks, they were totally fine to go out at two weeks. They were actually out in open air and probably 30 to 40 degrees at night without a heat lamp. I'm not saying these ones will be ready to do that, but we're just going to be kind of keeping an eye on them and see, you know, as quickly as we can harden them off without harming them. The other thing these birds are known for is being flighty. So because they are more wild and better at foraging, they also are very good at getting away from prey and flying away from you. <laughs> We are very excited to have them and have gotten them from a local breeder. We didn't have to have these chicks shipped to us, but we are anxious to get them outside and doing what they do best, which is foraging. One last thing I wanted to show you guys is how we make our homemade chick starter. So there are several ingredients in this recipe, but the main ingredients is crimped barley. We've got whole peas and crimped oats. These grains would be appropriate to feed to an adult chicken, but because we have chicks, we need it smaller. And so what we do is we're blending it up in a blender to get this smaller feed. I've got four cups of peas, two cups of barley, two cups of oats, and I have one cup of wheat bran. So these all have different protein percentages, which is really important when you're raising chicks. So you wanna have more weight of peas and or wheat. I couldn't find wheat grain locally, so I'm using wheat bran. It's not the same, but I'm just gonna be adding more peas to compensate for that. So we found that we're gonna grind the peas first. And I'm gonna start with half of it. So I'm gonna pour these out. That's the barley. Now we have the oats. The bran, because it's already flakes, does not need to be ground, so I'm just going to put that directly into the bowl. So you can see this ground up very well. And when the chickens are about one month, we won't grind any of this up. We'll just get whole oats, whole barley, and continue on with the whole peas and they'll be able to eat it just fine. So to finish the recipe off, I have flaxseed. This is just the wheat bran, bran that we already put in. I have kelp meal, we have brewer's yeast, and coconut oil. So once the chicks are older, we're gonna switch over to sunflower seeds, but flax seeds are more appropriate for their age size-wise. So I'm going to put a quarter cup in there, and this is kelp meal. You wanna make sure you get food grade kelp meal, not the gardening kind. And I'm gonna put just a little under two tablespoons. We're gonna add one teaspoon of brewer's yeast. Because we have lots of dry ingredients in here, I want to make sure the chicks get it. They tend to just scratch all their food around. So we've been using coconut oil. You can also use olive oil to act as a binding agent. The other option is to soak their feed too. So I'm just going to mix this with my hands. And the reason again we're doing that is because the chicks will pick out the big stuff or the more manageable pieces, but they will easily leave behind the small stuff. Just will get missed. So you want them to get that since that's a lot of the vitamins. 
This is fermented feed. This has been sitting, I think, for a day now. To truly get fermented feed, you'd have to let it sit for three days. But because they're chicks, I don't really want to ferment it that long or feed them that much of it. So we've just been doing one day fermenting. And you can tell it's fermented because when you stir it, you'll get these little bubbles popping up. So this is a great recipe if you don't want to buy chick starter and you want to make yours at home and know what ingredients your chickens are getting. Back home we used to make our adult chickens feed and it worked really well. Do look it up online and just make sure you follow a recipe or kind of have a good base because you do want to make sure they are getting enough protein and the vitamins and nutrients they need, especially if they're not out foraging. Another great thing about making your own chick feed is it generally is cheaper. I'm not using organic ingredients. That is going to make the cost quite a bit more. In general, you're buying the ingredients in bulk and you're making a lot of food out of it compared to just buying a 40 pound sack of food for the chicks. So we hope this recipe can help you guys maybe save money and feel better about what you're feeding your chicks.